Peroni's disease. You remember Peroni's disease? Yeah. yeah okay. Idiopathic fibrosis. Yes, yes. So what's often happened, I think, is that the, the pathophysiology has been having intercourse, got a bit carried away, maybe the erection isn't as good as it was, and they've kinked the penis during intercourse, and then they've got some bruising is what it is. So that if you take a knife, and I know it's a horrible thought, take a <laughs> knife, cut through the penis, transect it, do it years ago, that chap John Wayne Bobbitt, wasn't there? <laughs> cut across the penis, you'll see that the erectile tissue is surrounded by like an onion skin of fibrous tissue. And it's the swelling of the blood against that onion skin which causes the erection, but it's got little veins in it because it needs to stay alive. And if the veins get torn because the penis is kinked, then they end up with some bruising between those layers, and as the bruising heals, it causes fibrosis. And when it causes fibrosis, as an erection is just the tissue elongating, if one half can't elongate and the other half can, they get a kink in it. So what do you normally tell your patients? What do you say? Apart from giving them that explanation of the natural history, or of the, of the, of the mechanism, how do you, what do you normally do with them? Send them up? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you need to. Um, in terms of medications, the Europeans love vitamin E, pataba, tamoxifen, they love them. I don't think there's very good evidence that they work. Having said that, if it was me, I might take them. I don't know. Um, but, I, but I think the evidence is poor. Um, so, but some people, some people do take them. Um, any medical people I've looked after always take them, I have to say. But I'm, I'm not sure whether that's an indication that we should be prescribing tablets. Um, <coughs> I would also always say to the patient that what happens is, for the first 18 months, the bend is going to get worse gradually. For the first six months, it's usually going to be painful. You can still have intercourse if it's not too uncomfortable to have intercourse. You don't need to stop. But have intercourse, expect it to be a bit sore, and then um, keep going for 18 months. Get them to draw. I uh, some of my colleagues say take a photo on their mobile phone. I, I'm not so sure about that. Get them to draw the angle on a piece of paper that can then be destroyed, I think, is probably tidier, more savoury. Um, and uh, <coughs> unless it's 45 degrees, they can nearly always have intercourse with a bit of reassurance. They nearly always can. And reassure them they're not going to injure their wife because they're not going to injure their wife. Um, and then see them again up to 18 months. If at 18 months they're still struggling and there's a terrible bend, they're finding intercourse difficult, then send them to me. Because I can't operate on them until 18 months because it's not stabilised. So what tends to happen is you send them up quite early and what we should do is we should send them out but the SHO says, come back in four months, we'll see how you're doing. And they end up with about four or five outpatient appointments before we get to 18 months and it's pointless, you know, for everybody concerned. So what do you do? There are two operations. <coughs> One is called loose procedure, where we take a piece of maybe fascia from the leg, we look at the area where there's the defect, we open it up and put a piece of fascia in, stitch it in. No loss of penile length, but quite a high risk of impotence afterwards. The other one is a, is a thing called Nesbitt's procedure, where if you've got a shortening on one side, we make a little nick on the other side, just tighten it a bit on the other side and get it straight. Then I say to the patient, but you'll lose about a centimetre and a half of length, and they say, gee, it's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> I think I'll go and have another go at home, thanks very much. But, it, but for some people it's a very successful operation, it does work very well. If people have got erectile dysfunction and they've got, they've got a kink, and that's often the case, then actually we should think about rods for them, implantable rods, that's often better. That's big heavy duty surgery. Quite often they've got diabetes as well and then you've got to worry about rod erosion and infections and things, so it's, it's quite involved. <coughs>